In today's video, I'm going to review all of the Pro Series lenses for your iPhone by a company called Reflex. And here they are. These are all of the Pro Series lenses. They're all made of aircraft grade aluminium body and they have a multi-element glass design. In the two cases for the wide angle 18 millimeter and the telephoto 60 millimeter, I will show a side-by-side -side comparison of me taking some photos and videos with the lens and without the lens. For the rest of them, I won't show any side-by-side -side comparisons because obviously these lenses have different features and functionalities like the anamorphic lens and the macro lenses, which the iPhone doesn't do by native design. Inside each box of the lenses, you get this carry case for the lens and you also have a microfiber cleaning cloth and also a quick get started guide as well. Also check out the details in the description below. I have a 10% code off for all of you guys. So if you are interested in buying any of these lenses, you can get 10% off across the entire website, including the iPhone cases. Now there's many lenses out there already developed by various different manufacturers. I've reviewed a couple on my channel previously as well. There's one reason why the reflex lenses and reflex as a company stand out more to me than some of the other lenses is because they also complement this with a pro series camera app. Now for a company to develop an app which has pro DSLR like features to complement their lenses that they provide for iPhone just shows how much investment they make and how much understanding they have of photographers and videographers needs when it comes to giving you the complete package. So every photo that I'm going to take in this video will be using the Reflex Pro camera app that which you can find on the iOS store. It doesn't allow you to record videos, so I will shoot videos using my native camera app on my iPhone, but I will start off by giving a demo of what the capabilities of this app is when we begin. Everything in this video will be chaptered down below with the categories of each of these different lenses. So if you'd like to skip or you want to go back to any of them, you can do that very easily. But first of all, let's go ahead and start off by giving you an overview of the Pro Camera app by Reflex. Okay, so this is the Reflex Pro app. Just along the top header bar there, the first option is the flash option, so you can turn that on, have it on auto, or make sure it's off all the time. The second one is the timer, so you can have up to three, 10, or 20 seconds to set the timer on that. The middle one, this is the gyroscopic tilt meter, so you can use that just to make sure you have your iPhone at a horizontal level. The next one is grid lines, so you can actually switch between various different types of grid line designs just in case you wanted to position some things in different parts of the viewfinder. And then on the top right, you have yourself the flip camera button, so you can switch it between the main camera at the back and the selfie camera. Then along the bottom, you have yourself the Pro DSLR features that you can manually adjust. So you have the ISO, the shutter speed, the exposure value, manual focus, and the white balance. If you tap any of them, you have a slider that comes up so you can change any of these options like so. If I go to white balance, you can adjust that. Shutter speed, ISO, very quick and easy to do. So wherever you are, you want to get the perfect photo for your photography, then you can make the manual adjustments like this. If you wanted to reset back to auto, just double tap on the viewfinder, everything gets set back to auto again. And below those adjustments, you have a few other options here. The first one there is focus peaking. So you can use this to take advantage of that feature just so you can nail the manual focus settings over your subject. And this works by essentially detecting the edges of the highest contrasts in whatever your scene is, and it highlights them in this green color. The next one is live histogram. Now this is available in both Luma and RGB. At the moment, you're seeing it in Luma. If you tap the histogram bar at the top, this switches to the RGB spectrum, which just allows you to check the overall exposure of your image so you can obtain the most optimal level of brightness in your scene. The next one are the zebra stripes. Now you can use this to identify over or underexposed regions of your scene. The red and blue stripe patterns, they appear in your scene where they are overexposed or underexposed, and they help you identify, you know, respectively over and underexposed regions in your photography. This really helps by adjusting the EV value here. So you can see in my light panels on the wall at the back, in some cases it is popping up with those striped patterns. Now you can you know, adjust this so those can slowly disappear. And of course, you know whatever works best with these pro level features, you can just play around with it 
and that will help you get the best photography for whatever scene you are shooting in. This last option here just on the right is the slow shutter speed. Now this is something that you can purchase as a one-off cost or a annual subscription, but this allows you to create these really cool effects by utilizing the slow shutter, especially when you go outdoors and you wanna create some lighting effects at nighttime, whether that's at a fair, of some fireworks or whatever it may be. There's some really cool creative videos that you can develop by using this mode. And that is an additional option available for anyone that likes it. You can switch between the three different camera lenses on your iPhone, so wide, telephoto, and ultra wide by pressing that button there. You have a shutter button. You can save your images in HAIF, in RAW, or Pro RAW. If I just set it just to my standard ones, I've set it in my iPhone camera settings to export them as JPEGs. So that's what will happen when I keep that selected as the default. You also have settings here that you can cycle through and adjust the settings in the app, which is pretty standard. But there's another really cool feature that I wanted to mention that takes your pro DSLR photography for your iPhone to the next level. If you tap the screen once and then tap again twice, you'll see there's these two reticles that pop up. You can move these around the viewfinder wherever you like. One of them is for the focus, one of them is for the exposure. This allows you to essentially get the perfect focus and exposure in your backgrounds by focusing these reticles in the correct positions. So if I put the exposure on the light panels there at the back and I have my focus on my little U light ornament here, I can get the focus directly on this by underexposing some of the lights in the background. Now to lock these reticles into place, you literally just hold that down and it goes green. Likewise with the other one. So if I just go like this, you'll see that this is slightly in focus now. And if I move this around, that focus and the exposure values will not change and it will always stay constant to that spot. If you wanted to manually adjust them, then that's something that you can also do. So now that I've given you a quick overview of the capabilities of this app, let's go ahead and review the lenses. Starting off with the wide angle 18 mm This gives you wider angle shots than the 26 mm wide focal on the iPhone 12 Pro with a 110 degree field of view. This lens will give you sharper photos and videos and I'll show you a side by side comparison without the lens as well so you guys can see the difference. Okay so the left hand side photos are from my main camera on the iPhone and the right hand side is the reflex lens attached to the same wide angle iPhone lens. You'll notice in this first pic that using the Reflex app, how much clarity, sharpness and detail I can capture by making certain adjustments in conjunction with the Reflex lens itself and again how much field of view you get with the ultra wide view. And now here's a whole bunch of more comparisons. Next, let's take a look at the 60mm telephoto lens. For context, the iPhone 12 has a 52mm focal length for its telephoto lens, but since I'll be attaching this lens to the main 26mm wide iPhone lens, you'll get twice the optical magnification with much higher detail and focus for your photography, especially when it comes to stunning depth of field portraits. But just remember, you can also attach this to the telephoto lens on your iPhone and get up to four to five times the optical zoom. So in these comparisons, I'll be using the reflex lens on the main wide 26 mm iPhone lens because that's the lens with the highest quality. One of the main things you'll notice is that although the image seems zoomed in, you won't get any distortion or loss of image quality whatsoever, whilst also maintaining a level of image detail that's made specifically for portrait photography, as you'll see in these next examples.
The Macro 10X lens is great for capturing those close-up shots of things you can't see with the naked eye. It's best taken from around 10 to 20 millimeter distance from the subject, but once you do, it's amazing how much detail this lens has to offer. Let's take a look at some samples. This first one is of a close-up inside a sunflower, and you can just see how great the detail and colors look, especially at the tiny fragments of the inside of the flower head, which you won't be able to see with the naked eye. Now here's an extreme close-up of various other plants and objects around my home and garden. This macro lens was created specifically for cinematic macro photography and videography. It has a working distance of around 20 to 40 millimeters, allowing you to capture your subject in motion by focusing in close to the intricate details whilst still providing a beautiful depth of field. Let's see some examples. Starting off with some photos, much like the macro 10X lens, this also provides such a clear image close up of the subjects but with the flexibility of being more at a distance. Of course, I expect the same level of quality with the macro lens, so here's a set of other close-up shots, followed by some close-up videos of moving subjects. Now, the fisheye lens was exclusively designed to capture action footage and dynamic shots, aiming to provide an incredibly immersive ultra-wide 210 degree view. It's also perfect for capturing architecture, events photography and a whole lot more. Although it's not made specifically for photography, I'll show you some sample photos to start off with and then show you some videos. Now this is a pic I took of the summer house and it's rare for me to capture this much field of view in one shot. Curving around the sides I get to see my fire pit area on the left and my detached garage on the right side, all of which would be difficult to get with just one standard iPhone photo with a 4x3 aspect ratio capture. In portrait view you can really see how curved the fisheye photo comes out. And the last set of images here is just me sitting on my sofa in my living room, but captured at three different distances to see a comparison of how good that 210 degree field of view captures. Now here's a set of videos I've taken around town using this lens.
the anamorphic 1.33x lens allows you to capture cinematic footage with a few features such as an ultra wide aspect ratio, an oval bokeh and a horizontal blue flare which gives light streaks a more cinematic character. The unique oval shape lets you capture more horizontal information by squeezing the image giving that movie like effect very common in the sci-fi genre to all of your videos. Now let's take a look at some of the sample videos. Now just starting off with the lights here in my studio and it gives off a very soft and faded horizontal glare as you get closer to the lights. But the flares work best at a harsher light amongst a lot of darker areas. So here's me using the lens with my car headlight but I turn the lens to give me a vertical flare just to show you guys how the oval distortion works. If you were to either turn your phone sideways or to turn the lens at the back and not the phone, which you can see me doing here right now, you will see how it really distorts and animates the video with this lens. Now with anamorphic footage, it's always recommended to de-squeeze it in post-production so you don't get that very distorted look, but a much more cinematic look. There are third party apps available that allow you to record anamorphic video de-squeezed already like Moment or Filmic Pro but Reflex will be working on a dedicated video app in the future that will cater for this functionality too. Here's a side by side comparison of how it looks with the raw footage from the lens and the video de-squeezed and all of the next video samples you will see will be shown edited and de-squeezed in post. So that's it guys, every single Reflex Pro series lenses for your iPhone. Hopefully you guys found that review very useful and it gave you an idea of the capabilities of this and also of the app. I'm super impressed with the capabilities of the app because it allows me to do a lot of more professional adjustments whilst I'm capturing the perfect photography or my videography for these lenses. I have a 10% code off for you guys, so check out that in the description if you wanted to get a bargain on any of these lenses or on the iPhone case as well, compatible with all of the iPhone models. Check out the link and more information on the Reflex website. I have new videos out every week and I'm reviewing all things tech and I review gadgets and accessories for iPhone as well and also for Android phones, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss all of the very cool videos I have coming out very soon and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.